welcome to episode 100 of the Postal Hub podcast. I'm Ian Kerr. My special guest is the CEO of DHL Parcel, Dr. Achim Dernwald. We talk about cross-border parcels, automation, and so much more. Before we get to Akeem, some really important news. The Postal Hub podcast is switching to a new podcast host, which should mean a better listening experience for many of you. I'll share more details in the coming weeks. Coming up in a moment, a quick word from John Callan about Postal Vision 2020, then DHL Parcel CEO, Dr. Akeem Dernwald. Joining me now on the Postal Hub podcast is John Callan from Ursa Major Associates. And guess what, everybody? We're going to be talking about Postal Vision 2020 again because it's getting really close now. And John, we know that the US Postal Service is a big part of Postal Vision 2020, but some of the overseas postal operators are getting involved as well. Can you give us a quick rundown of some of the other posts who are going to be attending or taking part or even presenting at Postal Vision 2020 this year? Yes, and uh, we love it. Uh, we love to learn from the foreign posts. Everybody knows that uh, many foreign posts have been liberalized, if not privatized, and uh, and have been extremely innovative. So with that, we are partnering with PIP, the Postal Innovation Platform, which is chaired by uh, Bernard Bukovk. And, uh, and he is uh, going to be conducting a session uh, that will include none other than Holger uh, Winkelbauer from um, IPC, the chairman, who's coming here for the first time. And uh, as well as um, uh, the innovation uh, directors, managers, senior folks from uh, Swiss Post, uh, the Post Venture Group, uh, GeoPost, uh, Posty Finland. So we've got a, a real cross pollination of ideas happening there at Postal Vision 2020 this year. John, for people who want to get involved, want to sign up to go along, uh, or maybe they even want to sponsor the event, how do they, uh, what do they do, John? Where do they go? Well, the easiest way to do that is to just go to postalvision2020.com. Uh, you'll see a banner at the top that is uh, promoting the the event, Postalvision 2020 8.0, themed, daring, sharing, caring. And click on that, and all the information will be there about all the sessions and speakers and everything else. So uh, that's the place. Okay, postalvision2020.com is where you go. There's also information there about the Postal Pitch Competition that we've mentioned before on the podcast. You might have read about it on thepostalhub.com. Postal Pitch is that great innovation judging panel or whatever you want to call it, a startup panel, which is being run as part of Postal Vision 2020 this year, 3rd to the 5th of April in Pentagon City in the USA. Looking forward to seeing you there, John. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, Ian, it'll be great to have you back. Joining me now on the Postal Hub podcast is Dr. Akim Dunwald, the CEO of DHL Parcel. Akim, welcome to the podcast. Uh, We're here in London. You've just come off stage. We've been talking a bit about some of the innovative things that DHL Parcel is doing, not just in Germany, but across Europe. And I thought, well, we might go into a bit of that, um, especially talking about cross-border, talking about new delivery options. Uh, we're not really going to talk about drones today, listeners, because I think everybody knows just how I feel <laughs> about about drones. Um, but let's just talk a little bit, just as an, an introduction, um, one of the things that you mentioned in your presentation was about engaging the, the growth and the potential growth of e-commerce and that in some countries in Europe, growth is sort of in single digits or penetration, I should say, is in single digits. In other countries such as the UK, um, we consider e- e-commerce has got more than 10% of the total retail spending. But another gauge you looked at was the number of B2C parcels per head, per annum. Can you just tell us a little bit about that and, and how that sort of gives you an indication of the potential growth in the sector? Sure. So first of all, thanks for having me. What I said on stage and what I would argue also off stage is that when you look at the e-commerce market, and that is quite a statement, I think we're still early days. Why do I say that? Two, I think, core KPIs that you could look at, and they tell the same story, is one, what is the share of online retail, as you've just said? And here in Europe, the most advanced market is the UK. Depending on what study you look at, you're somewhere between 15 and 20%. In Germany, you're lower. You're probably more than like between 10 and 15%. 12% is one number you read once in a while. 
and in most other European countries it's below 10 and often it's actually low single digit. Yeah? Conversely, that means that 85 to 95 percent of, of retail is still stationary, and that is where the growth comes from. Another KPI, again, it's reflecting the same thing, is the B2C parcels per head, where we're at about 17, 18 in Germany and around 15, 16 here in the UK, but really a uh, single digit and frankly below four per head in most European countries, including big ones like Italy and Spain. And hence, I think you could say, first of all, we are still early days, although when you treat e-commerce topics every day, it doesn't really feel like it. You think it's totally mainstream, but it isn't, right? It's only 10 to 15 percent of gross market value that's actually traded online and the rest is stationary. So it's early days. And another conclusion of that analysis is that there's a lot more to come if we get it right. Well, getting it right is a key part of it. And we'll talk about getting delivery right in a moment. I, I think you've touched on a key point, which is that the growth comes out of the e-commerce merchants or the retailers. Delivery is a contributor to that when you get the delivery right. And in your presentation, you mentioned three barriers to, to getting delivery or, or, or future we don't say barriers or problems anymore, we say issues, don't we, or challenges. Challenges, challenges, challenges. we call them. Um, and we might go through through these because I think that that will sort of draw out um, a, a lot of interesting points. One was the, the issue of rising trade barriers, and we even see it within Europe, um, mm -hmm. that uh, VAT exemptions are, are being challenged. So... What, how, how can, um, how can well, in this instance, DHL Parcel help an e-commerce retailer overcome some of these trade barriers? Right. Let me take a step back, just taking your idea. I think when we talk at the obstacles or challenges, we talk a lot about right how we get first-time delivery right. And that's a very important subject. I think if you take a, a, a little more strategic view and longer-term view, I think we also need to talk about rising trade barriers, environmental concerns, labor force scarcity, which is an issue in at least some parts of Europe, but an increasing number of countries, really. Now, rising trade barriers. We live in a time where probably there's more talk about protectionism, nationalism than we've heard for at least 25 years. And part of that's driven by e-commerce. And part look, of that yeah. may actually be driven by e-commerce, although I think there's other, if you or look at the Brexit vote yeah. and if you look at at uh, the current stance of the US American government. I don't want to talk about politics, but it's driven by other things as well. Uh, whatever they are, but we need to deal with them. Now at DHL, we do think that global trade actually increases wealth, individual wealth, and also the wealth of nations, so to say. And, and we see it at our task to provide answers to increasing trade barriers in spite of these headwinds. Now, at DHL Parcel, that means that we work very hard. And when we started our DHL Parcel Europe strategy in 2014, four years back now, we said we want to be able to connect 800 million consumers all across Europe. That includes Russia and Turkey, by the way. Otherwise, you wouldn't get to 800. Uh, but we want to create a network that connects senders to 800 million consumers all across Europe with what we call and strive to create a, a domestic European experience. So you mentioned there um, getting a, a pan-European reach. Uh, is it 25 or 26 countries? That well, you've it's got? 26 countries where we are right now, in some, and we strive to be in 35. So the 35 is where we want to be, and that represents this number, magic number of 800 million consumers. We are now in 26 countries running our own networks in some of them, including Germany, our home market, but also in others, Benelux, Poland, Czech Republic, and so forth, in working with either postal companies or also private companies like we do in Bulgaria and Romania uh, that act as partners for cross-border shipments using a standard that we defined. It's called DHL Parcel Connect and that defines certain label standards, transit times, delivery options, number of delivery days and so forth to make it easy 
inconvenient for senders and receivers to ship stuff around Europe. So does that mean that then you're able to offer a, a standard delivery experience for anyone within the network or, or are, some, are some partners or networks able to offer a, a, a more enhanced delivery experience? Well, the, the network, being a network, needs to be technically and technically compatible, obviously. Right. So there is a minimum standard. So we need to be able to reach e read each other's label. Uh, we need to be able to promise to consumers that what we offer is the best, that's at least what we strive for, the best B2C offer that you can get. So it implies, again, a certain number of delivery days. It implies a certain density of parcel shops uh, and so forth. And these are standards that we define and agree with uh, with our partners and obviously implement in our own networks. You just mentioned density of parcel shops. What's the, the, the ideal standard that you're trying to reach there when it comes to density of, of the, the reach of the network? I don't know exactly what the ideal is. I think my vision is you come out of, you step out of your house, turn, make a 360 degree turn and see a DHL sign somewhere. We're not quite there yet, uh, but what we do when we model the, our parcel shop networks, we say nobody should be further away than 10 minutes to the next parcel shop. And that across Europe implies a network of about 100,000 parcel shops that we are intending to build or to partner with. Ah, so partner with, so it's not necessarily, you'll be setting up a shop, it might be a partner, if you've partnered with, say, a post, the post office becomes the local post office. Correct. I mean, take, take Germany, where obviously our home market, we have a very dense network where we use the 11,000 or 12,000 post offices. By the way, none of them we run ourselves anymore. Isn't there one? Uh, well, there's two, ah. frankly. There's one in the post tower, our head office, and then there's another one in the government district in Berlin. Right. Those, those two so, we run ourselves, but all the others uh, are outsourced. Our biggest partner is still Postbank, but there's many others. But next to that, we run another, I don't know, 13,000 uh, 13, parcel shops, which oftentimes are, I don't know, lottery shops, mom and pop shops, uh, that uh, increase the density of what we have. And similarly, in Europe, we work with partners. So, for example, in Austria, we run a good number of pa our partner shops with Billa, the retailer, subsidiary of Rewe. So we like big partners because they give us stability, but there will always be a long tail of of single shops that, that, to, to that fill act out as the, our partners. To, to fill Correct. out the, the geographical reach. Uh, you mentioned, we've, we've talked about the reach. Let, can we talk a little bit about quickly about the performance side of things. You mentioned in your presentation speed, transparency and flexibility. What can you share with us about how, how DHL Parcel is, is trying to achieve this, whether it's through delivery options or, and you mentioned the harmonised label before, what can you share with us there? Well, I think it's an ever-evolving play field and when you uh, hear at the delivery conference, when you listen around, then I think there's a common sense and common opinion of what a good B2C offer entails, including delivery options. Now, we have done, we as DHL have done, I think, an enormous amount of work, including our own research and development on expanding delivery options. Now, take the pack stations. Back in 2001, I don't think there were a lot of people or companies, postal companies, talking about lockers back then. Uh, now everybody does, and in fact there's business models being built around running locker networks these days. We run a very dense locker network in Germany and we're expanding that to Europe. So you would find lockers now in Sweden, in Poland, in Holland and in other places, and there will be more. I think a question there is, how do you make the economic model work? Because the, the number of parcels and the density that we have, also given our market share in Germany, is not what, where we are in other countries, obviously not being our home markets. So one would have to think about the capex that you spend. So we are looking at parcels these days where we rip out, out some of the technology of the printers and of the computers and put in much lighter technology, maybe just a Bluetooth interface, uh, and that makes it cheaper in terms of capex to put down uh, these lockers. 
And one might also think about moving away, probably not in Germany, at least not yet, from the closed system that we have to an open system where, for example, you share the access to the locker with a retailer on whose parking lot you, you operate the locker. Right, so click and collect, enabling click and collect models. Now that goes down all the way to you didn't want to talk about drone delivery. That's fine with me. <laughs> but um, but one thing that I think has a chance to actually become one of the new standards. There will never be the st I mean the standard today is doorstep delivery. But we are we have been experimenting around with trunk delivery, as you know. Uh, we've ran a pilot with Audi. It's now available with Smart, a subsidiary of Daimler, in four German cities, uh, looking to expand it internationally as well. We will start providing that ser service with Volkswagen, and there are more automotive companies to come that I can't mention today. But I think once automotive companies equip their new vehicles with a Bluetooth interface to open the trunk, it may well become another standard of delivery, just like our pack stations have. Now, we've drifted into innovation, which uh, is really the, 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 the last major topic that yeah. we want to go over here. And um, you've mentioned delivery to the car boot, which is one of the things I was going to ask about. Um, we've seen uh, DHL really being one of the pioneers here, along with Post Nord, uh, with their partnership with Volvo. It's something you can't really retrofit, though. So those of us who have old cars... Uh, well, you, you can, and in fact, Smart is uh, offering uh, smart drivers to retrofit, so that is an option. I don't think it will be the usual option, but if you look at the turnover of new cars, I think it's a, it's a question of, I don't know, 10 years until most cars in Europe, at least, will have such a um, and, and the ability to to receive parcels. It's well known that well known. Everybody listening to this podcast would know that DHL has committed to zero emissions by the year 2050. I don't want to say it, well. It's in advance of what is being imposed by governments, especially in Western Europe, where that seems to be the strongest push for either electric or zero emissions vehicles. The street scooter is a big part of that. Can you just quickly introduce the concept of the street scooter and how it came to be that DHL developed it? Sure. So we, we have been experimenting with e-vehicles, including bikes, trikes, and so forth for quite a while. And we were looking for a solution a few years back, talking to our automotive suppliers on to also run cars um, with zero, that produce zero emission as they go on their delivery tours. At the time, the, our suppliers were unable to provide what we were looking for. So we looked for another solution and we found a little startup uh, which really is a spin-off of the Techni Technical University of Aachen. And that's what it was. It was called a street scooter. They were about to build a small, smart-like, four-person four vehicle when we came along and said, we think you're a great little startup, but you shouldn't build a, a four-person vehicle. You should build a delivery vehicle. And hence, we started with a delivery vehicle uh, with four cubic meters doing joint mail and parcel delivery, build another vehicle that takes eight cubic meters and are now in cooperation with Ford, building a large vehicle with 20 cubic meters that really is going to replace the standard delivery vehicles, right, the Sprinters and the Evecos that you currently see in operations at DHL. We could talk about electric vehicles all day and we don't really have time for that because we're being given the wind up here. But quickly before we sign off, you briefly mentioned um, you know, uh, autonomous delivery vehicles before. We want to talk about the Postbot, mm -hmm. which is something else that uh, Deutsche Post, DHL, is trialling right now. It's a little unit that, that follows the, yeah. the delivery, office, delivery officer on the, the his or her round. It's still in trial mode, is that right? Yeah, that's right. We we uh, are trialing it in a in a medium sized German city called Bad Hersfeld. It's kind of in the middle of Germany. It, it's it's actually where the first Amazon fulfillment center was because it's really right in the middle of of Germany. And as you say, w what it is, it's an autonomous vehicle that follows your 
feet. Feet. <laughs> feet. Yeah. Uh, follows the postman or woman around and really making it easier. So it's a solution for delivery by foot. But because we we right we run our usual parcel delivery with trucks in the future more and more e trucks. We run joint mail parcel delivery on the le in the less dense areas, also using the street scooter. So we were also looking for an e-solution for delivery by foot. And don't forget, postmen and women also carry more and more heavy stuff, be it postal stuff, heavy letters, so to say, small packets and so forth. And with an, let's say, aid, not only generally aging society, but also an aging Uh, workforce, uh, we are looking for ways to make delivery more efficient, but also easier, um, and hence, in total, more reliable. And that's what this postbot intends to do, following a postman around, uh, and that's really a very in innovative technology. Let's see where it takes us. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time, because we could talk for hours and hours about this, uh, but it's been an interesting insight into DHL Parcel's pan-European network, uh, its commitment to innovation, and uh, a little bit of a hint of where the future might lie. Dr. Akim Dernwald, the CEO of DHL Parcel, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Ian. Coming soon on the podcast, Igor Smeliansky, acting CEO of Ukraine Post, Alexander Pertsovsky, COO at Ukraine Post, Sam Clark, founder of all electric delivery company at Newt Cargo, and Rajib Chowdhury from Nakel Express. Make sure you never miss an episode of the Postal Hub podcast. Sign up for the Postal Hub e-newsletter. It's a weekly email update that includes the latest podcast and any other articles I've written during the week. Go to thepostalhub.com and sign up there. And of course, if you're on iTunes, you can subscribe through iTunes. You'll get each episode downloaded each week. And pretty soon I'm going to have an option for all you Android users as well. So stay tuned for that. If you're on LinkedIn, you can follow the Postal Hub company page there, or you can connect with me personally. As I always say, though, send me a message just to say who you are and that you're a listener to the Postal Hub podcast, and I'll almost certainly say yes to your invitation to connect. If you want to contact me about anything at all, just drop me an email direct at ian at thepostalhub.com. I'm Ian Kerr. Thanks for listening in, and I look forward to your company next time on the Postal Hub podcast. <laughs>